Hello and welcome to the video. Today we're just going to give a very very brief overview of the Sign Blazer software, how to use it for the basic user and how you can start to get it using on your cutter. So when you start up the program it uh, asks you if you want to update, there never is any updates. Um, there's various rumours going around as to why this program hasn't ever been updated. Um, which you can go and have a look for online if you really want to know um, and then after it's gone through that um, it will normally put you through to the trial version the reason why it goes through to the trial version is because you can't actually buy this anywhere um, but again if you go and have a look online I might leave a link down below there is a way as to how you can circumvent the trial um, because obviously if you have to open it up with a client around it, it doesn't really look that good that you're using a piece of trial um, rather than using the proper piece of kit so once you've gone through all of that this is the screen that opens up and it comes up with the tip of the day um, a few of them are quite good a few of them aren't so we just close that down now you have to bear in mind that here I'm using a widescreen um, so it might not look exactly the same as yours because it is on a big widescreen basically so what we've got here to start off with is we've got this purple box in the middle and this is the workspace so if we've got um, any kind of like a project which has come in and we know it's going to be over a certain area um, a certain kind of like dimensions we can rig this up to the purple square so what you do is you click on file workspace setup and you can then choose um, there's either the custom sizes for the signs which are all in there and you can go through or you can enter your own one and you can also decide if you want it in inches or millimeters now I'm English and I'm of an age where I can work in either um, but I know that there are other places and other people who can either only work in inches or the millimeters um, so yeah you just do that and you can change that so we've got it as a custom let's put it back down to inches again so if we go for uh, let's say 8 inches high by 6 inches wide and then we just click OK and you can see how that purple box has changed so if we was to mark that out with a line and then load it into the cutter that would just cut a box which is 8 by 6 so uh, if we go back up there again you can change this to anything it can be like a hundred and um, if I show you here, yeah, so if we go for 120 inches high and let's say the length is going to be 562 inches okay that's just as a mad crazy big size but there you go that's it there so it always comes up on your screen it doesn't matter how large or how small you want to actually go it will always come up on the screen so if we take it back down to 6x6 six six, just as an example um, and then we can work from there so now you know how to resize your work area. Now we quite often work with the decals which go onto cars and onto bikes and onto other places like that. And we sell those in certain sizes or we get asked if we can make a custom size. So this is where this box comes in really, really handy because we can rig it up to be 12 inches wide and we can import an image and that can then be expanded to being 12 inches wide so what we'll do is we'll import one of those images so all you do is you go to file you then come down to import and you can see it opens up the folder where you've got um, all of these images stored now it can work with a range of image types we mainly deal with EPS but as you can see along the top here you can have um, AIs, GIFs, bitmaps JPEGs and so on and so forth so you can change your folders over here if you wish to if you've got all of um, your images located in another folder so uh, let's go for one of the smiley faces and when you click twice on it it then comes up with the import mode so the first one is to use the full postscript interpreter or to use the postscript scanner now me personally I don't actually know the difference between the two um, I click on whatever works 
nine times out of ten it's using the postscript scanner and there you go that's your image there unfortunately that image isn't contained within that box which is where we want it because that's where we want it to be cut so using the roller on the mouse I'm just going to roll it forward and just zoom out and there you go so you can see I've got the box and I've got our image so what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on the white area and then I'm going to re-select the image the reason I do that is because there are quite a few times where you import an image and without even thinking about it you just click on it to move it and you find you only move half of it and then you have to do edit, undo then click reselect and do everything else so we've done that and we want to zoom back in so we could use the mouse scroller ball but the zoom in and out on this program is absolutely terrible trying to get it I say that and there we go easiest way of doing it is if you click up here where it says the cutter button just click on that and then finish and you're back in and you're zoomed in again so I have to take it back out a little bit you can see just at the top here in the corner little square resize the image down to what we want it to be and uh, yeah let's make it a bit smaller because I'm going to put in some text above it in just a minute um, because I want it back in the middle of the screen there we go we'll just do that again so that's our image in the middle of the screen that's how you import an image it really is as easy as that and if you just click in the white space you're then able to deselect everything so that's the image within the box we know how large the box is and what we're going to do so if we work um, along the top bit here you've got the uh, square tool so if you just click on the square tool and you can see these lines come up so if we just draw a square now if we go to there and that square has come out as white so if I go to the select tool again you can see it's there and then just down here where I've got the colors I can just click on that and it becomes black as easy as that you then got a tool there for the circle and again you just click and drag and click again and you've got yourself a circle so if we go back to the select tool we can then move it and if we want to resize it just to make it a little bit smaller so it squeezes in there okay the next one we'll take a look at is the borders one so if you click on borders again it is click and click again where you want the border to be and there you go you can see it there and as with most of these things if you go back to the select tool if you highlight it and if you right click it comes up with a load of options damn that's not the bit I wanted it to be all right we will delete that because I got that wrong then all right so if we go to borders again we click it click again and then we right click it there we go without going back to the select you've got the options as to where you can change the mode where if you click on either corner you click on one corner in the middle uh, you can change the thickness of the border um, the corner radius and other bits and pieces so that all comes up by doing the right click when you are in that mode so we go back to the select let's go and do um, text when you click on text it comes up with the dialog box so um, you can with this change the font there's loads and loads of fonts in there I've chosen this font there is a reason why I'm going to why I have chosen this font which I'll explain in just a second so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to click where I would like it to start from which is going to be there I'm just going to type it and then go to select and you can see we lose the box for the font I'm just going to make this a little bit smaller so as it squeezes onto the screen a little bit better and you'll be able to see so if I then click there so what you can see is we've got hey hey and we've got the various um, the various other objects which are there but what we can't see is how it's actually going to cut it uh, this is obviously ideal if you want to show it to any clients or anything and they're able to see how the artwork is going to look but what we want to see um, as the people who are going to make this is what it's going to cut like 
so what you do is if you go up to the top here where it says view and then you want to come down to where it says outline stroke wire frame and if you click on that you can see those are the lines that it, that it is going to cut now you can probably spot it straight away with this text up here we've got these bits where it's um, where there are too many lines now you can't do on this like you can do on a lot of other um, a lot of other kind of programs where you're actually able to click on those lines and then do like a delete so it won't actually cut them so if I zoom in you can see what we've got there so what we're going to do is we're going to go to um, arrange and then we go to the convert to curves so that's going to change it from being text over to being curves okay so what I'll do is then we go up to um, arrange and then weld and we will do the total weld and you can see that all of those other lines that it was going to add in in between with this text has now gone so all it's going to do is it's just going to do our outlines so if we go back to view and we turn off the outlines you can see that what we can see is what it's actually going to cut um, if I just turn that back on again there you go you can see so what we see is what it's actually going to cut right let's go back to the full screen there we go so one of the other great things with this program is it does come with a lot of um, added options um, you just really have to go around and you have to click and you have to try um, and just spend a couple of hours just going over stuff and try stuff um, like the borders you can change the borders the shadows you can change add in the shadows library it's got tons of images that you can just go through and you can try and you can just have a look and just have a play about and see what's there um, one of the cool things I like to do um, and I find it is quite good for is uh, drawing arrows now that may sound quite sad but it's ideal if you need um, well I will show you so I've just gone to draw an arrow okay and then I just line it up I'm gonna do it outside of the box so I line it up over here and just click once and there you go you can see I then have an arrow that I can manipulate so if we say we'll have uh, an arrow going down like that okay and then I just click again um, but then I can choose what type of arrow do I want you know do I want like um, a Vulcan fighter one or do I want a skinny one you know let's go for let's just say one like that and then you click again and then you get options as to what um, width you'd like that bit to be and you know I just click again and there you go so it might be a little bit sad but that is a cracking tool if you're ever stuck wanting to draw arrows which I know it's, I know it's easy enough just to have one and then uh, you know just click and you can rotate it to how you want it but having all of those options in there I quite like it anyway okay so we'll just run through a couple of the other options that are there uh, if we go to file um, you can save and you can save as so if you're doing any kind of like a design work rather than doing the import an instant cut you can save it and you can save it as um, you can print as well so if you want to show something to a client for example um, under the drawer options you've got the rectangle which is the square uh, circles you can do lines borders text library for all the pictures and arrow view you've got options to be able to zoom in zoom out as I said the zoom isn't that great it's just easier going to cutter and finish and it will just bring you back to the middle of the image edit you've got the normal kind of edit stuff that you would expect to be in there manipulate you can change size you can move you can measure if you're unsure like the measure tool is quite cool you can if you want to know how long this bit for hey hey is going to be for example uh, you just click one side and you just click the other side and there you go length 
3.46 inches um, that's because we've currently got it set to inches um, yep there you go set to inches but if we change it to millimeters then obviously uh, we go back in and we measure again um, like that and it comes up in millimeters uh, which is handy if you prefer to work in millimeters so where's we up to yeah that was it manipulate you can rotate you can mirror you can mirror one image off of itself uh, which is quite handy to do arranging stuff being able to combine objects split the objects take your text over to curves rasterize weld we've been through of being able to do that to change the lines the text the text options aren't great but you can use the text and it is quite good you can acquire images through a scanner I've never got it to be able to work um, another tool is being able to actually send a copy of this via email it does open up in the background so you only ever find it after you close this down and then it's there in the background uh, the settings you can show the rulers or you can turn the rulers off um, you can have it to auto save and you can change the toolbar as well um, the toolbar is absolutely huge it's massive it just goes on forever you can see over here there's two arrows and you can just click these and you can go through and then there's all the extra stuff so there is a lot there that you can actually do um, if you also come down here as well you've got um, the colors now I tend to leave the colors as they are um, because it's an old program but you can go through and you can actually change it and if you click on this one down here which has got the little rainbow colors to it if you click on that you can see that there was a time where the colors were being updated to the vinyl that was available from the manufacturers so you're getting pretty much near on screen colors so uh, yeah so if you go to like say the Oracle 651 and then it loads in all the colors that were available um, in the Oracle 651 and then you can use these little arrows here just to scroll through them all which was quite handy so right let's put this back to how it was and what we'll do now is we'll move on to the interesting bit about the cutter 